Hey, Robert, you want to do the intro today? I think you should try it. Bro. You know, remember what we say? for us today? Mm-mm. No? Do you remember our intro? Mm-mm. You don't? Uh, how, how do you think a good intro would go? How about good morning, right? Start there. Say good morning, everybody. My name is Robert. And this is my little assistant. Okay, <laughs> there we go. And we're doing a two-bit circus foundation creative hour play, right? <laughs> All right, we're working on him, trying to get him to do the intro. It is after 10 o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael. And this is my little assistant, Michael, and my name is Robert. Awesome, so this is Robert, and I'm his assistant today, Michael, and you're joining us for the Two-Bit Circus Foundation creative hour of play. And we are going to look at Newton's laws today. And the reason we decided to do this is because a lot of the activities that Robert and I have been working on, I have been mentioning Newton's laws, huh? But I realized that some of our viewers and Robert, they might not have learned Newton's laws in school yet because Robert as a first grader, he hasn't covered that yet. Maybe very little, but not yet in full force. So today we are going to be looking at Newton's Laws by doing a bunch of creative little activities. Nothing too challenging, but these cool little activities that you can do at home with things that you have laying around your house. Uh, I was raiding Robert's toy room today to try to find a bunch of creative toys that I can use to demonstrate I found one Newton's too. Laws to him. So tell us about your toy that you have there, Robert. I have a police go car. Mm-hmm. And I have my little character. Awesome. Which I named him Robert. <laughs> okay, so Robert is and our he character has a today. Green Bay helmet. Awesome. Show him something to everybody on camera. So this little guy is going to help us today. And Robert said his name is also Robert. And he is wearing a helmet from the Green Bay Packers, huh? Mm-hmm. And good thing we have a helmet on because we're going to do some experiments with Robert and his go-kart today. And he I might think fall out. He, might, he may be. Oh. I don't know. We're going to have to figure out what happens there. All right? And I made a little guy for you. And you made a little guy for me. Robert for go. Robert. Awesome. Cool. And I got a guy too. Is this guy going to be named Michael? Yeah. Awesome. And I have a helmet on too. Mm-hmm. All right. So some experiments Michael is going to do and other experiments Robert is going to do. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first little activity we're going to do is looking at Newton's laws. And I have them on the, the screen there for you as well. So when I make reference to them, you'll know what I'm talking about. And they're really easy and clear to find. Robert, can you go ahead and read Newton's first law there? Can you see that? Right here on the screen. I know it's tiny. Things. Objects in motion. Motion tend to stay in motion, and objects at rest tend to stay at rest unless acted upon by an an band. Good job. Sound it out. Unbalanced force. There you go. You got it. So as Robert read there, Newton's first law says objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest. 
unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So what does that mean? I like that. Starts on it said prove it. So we're going to prove that today, right? So the first thing that we're going to do, hey, Robert, let me see that little go card of yours. Let's put it right there on camera for everybody to see. Okay. And Robert, you're not allowed to touch it right now, okay? I want you to look at the cart. Don't touch it. Stare at it. Look at it from all different angles. Hmm. What do you observe happening to that cart? What's happening to it? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Is anything happening to the cart? Mm -mm. Is it moving? Mm -mm. Is it at rest? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What does at rest mean? It means it's not moving. Uh, it means it's not moving. So is the car moving? No. I know I'm asking the same question over and over again. Is the car moving? No. No. Is it going to start moving? No. Are you sure? I'm looking at it. Is it going to start moving? If only toys were alive, it would. Okay, maybe if they're alive, then they'd have forces and energy there to make them move. But we get the point, right? The car is not going to move. Right? Unless you push it. Say that again, Robert. That is so good. Unless you push it. Awesome. So isn't that what Isaac Newton said? He said, objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest, this objects at rest, tend to stay at rest unless what happens? Upon by unbalanced. Uh unbalanced force awesome. so then that means you have to touch it to make it move exactly so robert is on to something he's on to something very clever here the car is not going to move unless an external unbalanced force acts upon it right so if robert comes in here and pushes it then it's going to start moving Right? That guy, Isaac Newton, was pretty smart, huh? Awesome. So when you're working with students and Isaac Newton's first law, this is a very good activity to do. Just put a simple object on the table and let them stare at it for a couple minutes. Uh, when I did this with my high school students, it used to drive them crazy because they thought something was actually going to happen at times. But of course, Isaac Newton says objects at rest tend to stay at rest. And that's what our natural world around us shows us. Right, Robert? Mm -hmm. awesome. But Legos are different than these kind of metal cars. Okay, that tell me. That are called pullback cars. You have to pull them back. Okay. Because it has a winder inside. Uh-huh. Which and, makes it move. And so that winder inside will make, will make it move, right? Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And we're going to use that really cool sports car later on in an activity that we're going to do. Awesome. So, Robert, you understand this activity, though, right here, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me one more time, and then we'll move on from this one? Tell me one more time what you learned here. I learned that if you push it, it moves. You learned that if you push it, it's going to move, right? But if you don't push it and it's already staying there, it won't move. It won't move, right? But if you pushed it, what would happen then? Would it move and stop? Mm-hmm. Why do you think it moves and stops? Because you're not pushing enough force. Okay, so then maybe the forces become balanced again, right? And mm -hmm. they cancel out, right? Like this? Yeah. If you do that, And then it the stops friction moving. pushed it and slowed it down, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Awesome. So we're going to do another demo on these lines. But before we do that, someone on our chat said they came so close to calling today exploration of Newton's laws with Robert. And I think that that is a, a true statement, that it's all about Robert and his exploration today. So next time, maybe we call it that, huh? We're going to call the activity with Robert, and I'm going to be Robert's assistant, because you're the superstar here, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. All right, Robert, can you reach over there and grab that your drinking bottle from school, the blue one? 
cool. And what's inside there? Money. Money? What kind of money? Um, pennies. Pennies. Okay, let's dump out the pennies onto the table. Awesome. And then grab that heart-shaped cardboard. I need that too, though. Don't, don't go away with that. It's okay. Leave that over there. We don't want to show that on camera. That has our address on it. Okay. So we have this heart-shaped piece of cardboard that is from C's Candy. And we have it on top of a plastic water bottle. Now, we also have, Robert, what are these? Pennies. Pennies. So how many do we have? Tell them how many we have. Five. Five. Awesome. And I'm going to stack these five pennies for Robert on top, centered on the bottle with the, the heart-shaped cardboard on top. Okay? Now, in a moment, in a moment, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to try to hit that piece of cardboard off of that bottle. Like this? And we're going to flick it off as hard as I can, okay? And something's going to happen. You learned Newton's Law's first law, right? It said an object at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force pushes on it. Are those pennies at rest right now? Or they are, right? Mm -hmm. So if I push that, that heart-shaped cardboard away, what's going to happen to those pennies? They're going to fly. You think the pennies are going to fly too? Mm -hmm. And then they're going to hit something and then be balanced again Okay. and rest. Cool. That, that sounds like a good hypothesis there for our little experiment. When I hit that heart-shaped piece of cardboard, Robert thinks those pennies are gonna go flying towards the camera, right? And they're gonna hit something like the camera. Yeah? Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. That's yeah, Robert's yeah, hypothesis. Okay, now let's see, make sure I can do my force, my push really good on here, okay? Now, to make, make, make sure we're clear, Am I pushing on the pennies or am I pushing on the cardboard? Cardboard. Okay, I'm pushing on the cardboard and you think the pennies are going to go flying. Yeah, they're going to like launch up. No, they're going to launch up. Okay, let's see. They might. <gasps> what the heck just happened there? They flew into the bottle. They flew into the bottle. All of them? Show me all of them for the night. One, two, three, four, five Abraham Lincoln. Five Abraham Lincolns fell into the bottle, huh? So was your hypothesis correct or was your hypothesis incorrect? Incorrect. That's okay. That's what science is about, right? Hypotheses can be incorrect. I thought you were going to flip and then it was going to fall. Oh, that's why you thought I was going to like launch it so it tipped. Okay, but that's okay. That was still a good hypothesis. But now, Robert, I have a question for you. According to Isaac Newton's first law, he said objects at rest are going to remain at rest until a force pushes upon them. Did I ever touch the pennies? I did not touch the pennies. So what should the pennies have done? Nothing. They should have done nothing. They should have stayed up here floating in the air. Could you imagine that? Like Isaac Newton said, these pennies were at rest on top of the cardboard. Right? As soon as that cardboard leaves, the pennies should have stayed right here floating. But did they do that? No, they fell down. They fell straight down. So what can you conclude then based on your observations? What happened there? So it was it should have floated. Mm -hmm. It should have floated there according to Isaac Newton's law, but they didn't. Are you going to try it? Mm -hmm. okay. it was right. And then you want... Uh, I'll hold that bottle so it doesn't take it. And then they went right here. And then soft. So what can you conclude? Why did they fall down into the bottle and not stay there like Isaac Newton said? 
They're maybe not big enough for the bottle here. But that means the bottle would be holding them, right? Mm -hmm. But I think Newton didn't say that. He said if the, there was no force and they were at rest, they would stay at rest. Oh, if this was a magnet mm. to attract the penny? That, that would be a force to act on it, so that's true. So I think you're onto something about forces, something attracting it. What made it attract to go down? The bottle. The bottle did it? So if I took the pennies out here, and I put the pennies right here, and let go, would they still float? Mm -mm. What would happen? They would fall down. Why do they fall down? Because there's no force up there. Maybe there's a force acting on it though, right? Because Isaac Newton said, Objects at rest will stay at rest. Oh, so maybe the force is up higher and the pennies are on the bottom mm, of the force. Maybe. I think we're getting a little confused here, though, but that's okay. That's okay. Look here, Robert. If this penny is floating here and no forces are acting on it, it's going to stay there. But which direction did it move? Down. So something was pulling it down. Do you know something that pulls things down when you're on Earth? Gravity! Ah, you got it! So, Isaac Newton, a long time ago, he discovered the idea of gravity. He imagined that if we were in a world without gravity, this penny would just float there. And the only reason it falls is because there's an unbalanced force acting upon it. Because oh. this is Earth, we're not outer space. Oh, outer we're... space doesn't have gravity. Ah, you're, you're kind of right. Outer space has gravity, but the effects of gravity are really small. That's how the Earth still goes around the sun, is because of gravity. So there is still gravity out there, right? Awesome. You, you get the idea, though. I'm just giving you a hard time here. Awesome. So, Isaac Newton says an object at rest will stay at rest until an unbalanced force acts upon it. On Earth, unbalanced forces act on things by pulling them down, and we call that gravity. So everything on Earth will come downward due to the effects of gravity, unless you have a balanced force or an upward unbalanced force. Awesome. Any questions on that, Robert? I think you're pretty good with that. Mm -hmm. Star Sonic said it does. Question? I don't know what the reference to was, but okay. Maybe, but there is gravity in space. Thank you for that, Domingo. I think there is gravity, I know, but I don't know if that was her, her reference. But we'll, we'll find out. She'll, she'll probably make another comment. Awesome, bud. So you get that now, right? But there's another thing there. There's another part of Newton's first law that we have yet to cover. And it says objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So what do you think that means, Robert? L listen to the wording, I'm going to repeat it to you. An object, so like this penny, in motion is going to stay in motion until an unbalanced force acts upon it. So what does that mean? That means if there's nothing there to catch it, it will keep falling down until it hits something. Good, good, if it's falling down, right? Mm -hmm. And then it also means like if it's full going this way, horizontally, right? That it would keep moving in a straight line horizontally until something is there to stop it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're right. So if we had like this penny falling, 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 if this table wasn't here, what would happen? It would keep on falling. Right, but the table's here, so as soon as it falls, it hits the table. But what? if there was no table, it would hit the ground. Exactly. If there was no ground, it would hit outer space. And it would just keep going forever and ever and ever and Until ever. Until somebody gets it back on Earth. Until somebody, or somebody stops it, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's what Isaac Newton's first law is saying. That objects are, we could say, lazy. They don't like to change what they're doing. So if they're not moving, they don't like to start moving. If objects are already moving, they're lazy. They don't like to change. They like to keep on moving. 
So you have to apply a force to them to make that motion stop. All right, but let's check something to see if that's true. If Where Isaac is Newton said if something is keep, okay, we could do Michael right now. Michael is going to do an experiment where he's going to keep on moving until something stops him from moving. So I, you know that little cool orange car you were showing earlier? Mm -hmm. Let's bring that on camera. Let's do something with that. Awesome. And then we have a comment here. So let's take a, a stream proving big Newton's law. It has <laughs> weird light on here. Awesome. All right. So this is our experiment that we're going to do, Robert. You told me that this car has like a motor inside it, right? Like a spring that you, you bring all the way back by pulling it back. And then when you let go, it goes. Oh, it kept going. <laughs> I thought something over there was going to stop it, but I was wrong. So Robert is going to go get the car that just crashed off our table. Awesome. And we're going to do another little experiment here with this orange car. Come back, Robert. I need your help for this experiment. Awesome. So we have this orange car here, and we have this wheel. We're going to do an experiment, Robert, where this car is going to move and crash into that wheel. So the wheel is going to stop the car. But we're going to put me, the crash dummy, Michael, <laughs> you like that? That's why I'm wearing my helmet on top of the car. Now let's see. I'm trying to get him on there in a way that he can, can stay Can I be on the there. next crash dummy? Can I be the next crash dummy? So all our walls are howling now. Anytime there's a oh siren gosh. or anything that goes by an alarm, all the neighborhood dogs start howling like wolves. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Robert, we have Crash Dummy Michael on top of the car. Yay. We have something to stop the car. I'm going to pull the car. Well, you could pull the car back. You want to do it? You could do it. You could pull the car back in a moment. Not yet. Not yet. In a moment, you're going to pull the car back and let go. And I want you to hypothesize, Robert, when the car hits the wheel, what is going to happen to Crash Dummy Michael? Mm, hmm. The wheel? So then the car, when it pulls back, it might okay. with Crash Dummy Michael and, and then Crash Dummy keep, Michael. Keep it on camera so we can see what you're doing. Uh huh. Until it hits something. Okay, so according to Isaac Newton's law, you think that this car is going to hit this and then it's going to flip over and the car and Crash Dummy Michael are going to keep on moving, right? Let's see if you're right. You ready? Okay. All right. Keep going. Make sure it keeps straight so that way it actually hits this. What did you notice happened? Crash Dummy Michael fell. Okay. So the car... The car stopped, right? So if you pull this back, the car stops. And Crash Dummy Michael did what? Fell. He fell, or he, I want you to use very specific language. Was he was he moving when he was back here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, a, he's moving with the car. And then this stopped the car. And what did Crash Dummy Michael keep doing? Flying, flying until the wheel hit. Yeah, until the wheel or something and gravity pulled him down, right? Awesome. So, Robert, I think you're on to something. And I think Isaac Newton was correct. What What do you think? Do you think he was right? Mm -hmm. That objects, if they're moving, they're going to keep on moving, right? Oh, I figured this out. It's Tell because me. this, the bumper, when it crashed, Crash Dummy Michael hit it and then fell on the wheel. And then I stopped, right? Mm -hmm. So if there wasn't something there to stop me... I would have kept on going and going and going. Awesome. Now, Robert, I have another question for you. When you're in the car, Daddy always yells at you and tells you to put your seat belt on. Seat belt on. Why do you think it's important that you wear your seat belt when we're driving in the car? Or else then that would happen. That would happen. And who is the person to discover that for the very first time? 
Isaac Newton. Isaac, Isaac Newton. And what is that law called? Isaac Newton's fifth, first law, right? Fifth law or first law? First law, 50 right? law. No, 50 mm -hmm. law. First law. 50 awesome. law. 50 law. So, 50 law. I think Robert, in this quick little bit of time, already understands from life experiences and playing with toys, Isaac Newton's first law. That objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest unless an unbalanced force acts upon them. Now can and I do it? And that's why it's very important that you wear your seatbelt when you're in a car, right? Because if there's ever an accident or somebody hits their brakes hard, you're going to keep on moving unless that seatbelt's there to stop you, right? And you don't want to go and have the windshield stop you, do you? That would hurt, huh? You're like, smack into the windshield, that would hurt. Oh, maybe you can break through it. And that would be even worse, huh, if you broke through it, if you were going so fast that you broke through the window and it couldn't stop you either. Then something would have to stop you, right? Like, like a, a ground, car? A ground, a car, and that wouldn't be fun. Huh? Mm -hmm. And that's why riding motorcycles are dangerous too, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they wear helmets, because if they hit something or they crash, their motorcycle is going to stop, oh, yeah. but they're going to keep on going. Yeah. Like when you crash, when I crash and I hit the auto, uh -huh. and then I keep on flying until I hit a car. Exactly, just like that. All right, so are we ready to move on to Newton's second law? We're not going to talk about that right now. Helmet, uh -huh. You need to wait a little bit on the motorcycle. Yeah. We're not going to talk more about Grand Theft Auto right now. But you, you're right. You, that is a good experience for that. Give me five. Awesome. All right. Newton's second law. Can you read that for me? What does Newton's second law say? Fourth. <laughs> a fourth equals math times. Fourth equals mass times, and that's a tricky word there, huh? Acceleration. Do you know what acceleration means? Mm -mm. It can mean three things, three different things. Are you ready for it? Mm -hmm. Number one, it means you could be speeding up. It means you could be slowing down. Or you could be changing direction. So any time that you speed up, slow down, or change a direction, you have acceleration. Okay? So when daddy's in his car driving and he's speeding up, like to get on the freeway, he's accelerating. So, look, remember mm -hmm. at museums they make the sun like this? Mm -hmm. Like the rotation of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. We could talk about the planets in a minute with Newton's laws. Because Newton discovered a lot of things with planets using these laws. He discovered gravity, how the Earth goes around the sun, all of that stuff. Okay. All right. So let's look at Newton's second law here. And I did talk about this a lot before the other day about force equals mass times acceleration. And really, Newton, I told you in the, the other day, that he wrote it in his book, The Principia, he actually wrote it in a different way, where he wrote it as A is equal to F over M, where the acceleration, the speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction is actually a ratio of the amount of force applied, the unbalanced force, and the mass of the object. So we're gonna do some experimentation with this today, right now, and determine what happens to the acceleration of moving objects when you have a force mass ratio that could change? And I know I use a lot of big words there for you, huh? But that's okay. We'll figure that all out right now. So Robert, where's that car? We were gonna make a we're gonna make a Lego car. Do you wanna make a, Le a Lego car really quick? Okay, can you do that? There's some Legos in there. And Robert, be on camera so you can show people how you're making your Legos car, okay? I can move those Legos closer here. So Robert is going to make a Lego car really quickly that we are going to use for our experiment. 
Now I have a, a requirement for the Lego car runner. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It needs to be big enough that I could put little things like other Legos on top of it, right? So I think it would be a, a good idea. I know, and I'm changing your design a little bit, but I need like a, a flat surface. Oh yeah. Okay, to, to do the car. While Robert does that and gets his car ready, I am going to prep a device that we could hang off of the table and put different masses in it and attach it to a string. And then what we're going to do is we're going to vary the mass in the object that's hanging off of the table and use weight to apply different forces to the car and see how that car moves. So I have a string here and a little bottle, again, that I could either put stuff in, you could put objects in here, or you could even put water in here at different levels. And by doing that, you're going to change the mass of this object by hanging it off the table. That's going to be equivalent to weight. And I know I brushed over this concept really quickly, but weight is just a fancy word for the force of gravity. Okay? So whenever you step on a scale and you're looking at your body weight, you are just looking at how hard gravity is pulling or Earth is pulling down on your body. All right. So Robert's going to make this car, and I am going to put this string. So Starks on it said, I also think Newton's Law would be a good name for a show where a cop uses physics to solve crime. That would be a pretty awesome show, Robert. Would you watch that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, I want to share a story with all of you because we brought up that idea of using um, physics to, to solve crimes. But uh, when I was in high school, my teacher actually told me that if you ever get in a fight, a good idea is to use Newton's laws as a way to get out of you starting the fight. And we could talk more about that when we get to Newton's third law. But it was a way that you could try to be funny and uh, articulate a reason for you punching somebody. Right? My, my wife's laughing over here. I think she caught on already to the idea. But we'll, we'll revisit that concept maybe when we get to third law. He's falling like falling. And then starts on it said, that's why you weigh different on different planets. That's absolutely true. When you go to different planets, if we ever have the opportunity to, uh, you go to different planets, you will be able to weigh less by going to those planets because the effect of gravity changes. However, your body mass and the amount of stuff that you're made of, okay, unfortunately, go -kart. still remains the it's same. Like go -kart. Awesome. Okay, that's cool. So Robert has his car here with two wheels. Uh, let's try to find a third wheel or fourth wheel just so we can balance it out. I really like the car, though, that you made. Oh, I like how you sandwiched the wheels in there, too. That's a very quick, creative design. It was so quick and creative, I'm not even done with my string. I was talking. Cool. Robert, can you always try to find a way to put a third wheel in there? I know. A fourth yeah, maybe you could use these wheels from here for the no, car. I know. Okay, I know how to make the go kart cool. Awesome. You figure that out real quick and you can tell people what you're doing too to explain it to make it cool. I'm using this thing. I'm using this little bumper to put through the big wheel. Awesome. Oh, that's fine. That's okay, you do it. Take your time. All right, and while he does that, I'm just prepping my bottle here, like I said I was going to, but never got to do. So I'm just using a drill real quick to make a hole in here. Oh, it would have been easy. I didn't know there was paper at the bottom. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to put the string through here. Robert, were you done talking or are you going to say more? <laughs> I think Cole wants to say something, huh? You hear him out there crying? Mm -hmm. All right, tell us more what you're doing there. 
So I'm changing the wheel place so I have room for the huge wheel. Nice. And I am having no luck with this string. I am having good luck. Awesome. And then once we get this all set up, we're going to do a pretty cool, easy experiment here. I think the setup is actually harder than the experiment. I have fat fingers, I can't get the string. Got it. I think I got it. Kind of got it. I did it. Got it. I did it. I got the string through. Awesome. Now I got to tie a knot here in the string. And the knot is just to prevent it from backing out of the cap. So I'm going to try to make the knot as big as I can over and over again. Just a simple loop knot. And this time I'm going to try to do a block. All right. If you need help, let me know. I'll try to help you. See, so now you can pull on this really hard and it will not come off of the cap. So we have our little hanger here that we can now hang uh, off of the edge. Are too big. We'll, we'll take a look at that right now. So you have this here and then we could put different masks in here, hang it off of the edge of the table to apply different forces to our car through the string. <laughs> I like that star out and that, that is definitely true. She said, dogs are huge fans of Newton's laws because without gravity, food would never fall to the floor. <laughs> That's so true, huh, Robert? Mm -hmm. Paul sits there and he just stares at us while we're eating. I think that's a good idea. So the, the is it going to rotate like that? That's like a weird rotation, right? Off our axis. So what we could do, Robert, I think that's fine there. Leave it there. I think that wheel is good there. So you had it like this, right? see oh it doesn't fit in there that's why I got your issue okay no worries I like these two wheels here can we Let's see I just don't want it to hit so there's no friction with the ground you see how it kind of tips it'll still work but I would like it so it doesn't tip that's my goal let's see that helps, right? It doesn't tip that way. What do you think? Do you think that's good enough for our experiment? Mm-hmm. Awesome. We just need another big wheel. Then it would look real cool. I think it looks real cool like that, missing a wheel, honestly. I think that's pretty cool. It's like it went in a big, huge race. Yeah. You could even, if you find something like straight like this, we could put it in the back here. And then it could be more centered. And then it'd be like a tricycle or something. All right? This is piece isn't good because it has that thing there. Can you find a little straight piece like a Lego? Like this? Yeah, but longer. Find something a little bit longer than that. This one will work. So we could do like that. Put this in the center. And then put your wheel on there. Oh, we don't need that piece. Off. Put the wheel on there. And then we have a little simple car that we made really quickly out of legs. It looks like a tricycle, huh? Awesome. So, Robert, can I drill a hole into the Lego here? Mm -mm. Just one little hole? So we can attach a string to it? I think it'll be okay. You're the greatest one ever. I'm the greatest one? Do you want to drill the hole? Okay, you remember how to use this, right? Yeah. Okay, you go slow. I'm going to hold it up like this for you, okay? We could drill the hole like right there, okay? Take your time. Ooh. Okay. All right, let's see here. The Legos, I don't even know if we could make a hole to this. That's pretty strong. Huh? Yeah, okay. That's the plastic. Okay, hold on. Don't touch the edge there. Pull it a little bit more. All right, perfect. That'll work. Okay, let's put the drill away. 
that sometimes that's hot rubber, so be careful touching the edge here. Okay. Awesome hole. Okay, let's see. Now we're gonna put this together with our car. I'm gonna get the other end of the string here. So we're gonna cut this. So again, right now what we're doing is we're setting up a, a toy car that Robert made here with a string attached to it and a bottle that's gonna have masses on there. And this is a little experiment that is called carts and masses. Robert, why do you think it's called carts and masses? Because you can use little go-karts, uh -huh. little Lego go-karts mm -hmm. with a string. And why is it called masses? Because you have a mass hanging off the edge. Hmm. Okay, let me try to get this string through here. Down, 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 down. Awesome, down, got it through. Down, 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 down. And now let's tie a knot in this string so it stays here. And make sure that the string is not touching the wheels at all. That way it doesn't rub and create friction. And I think we are okay there. Awesome. So Robert, I think this is going to work. We need to clear off the tape over here because we have a lot of mess. And I want to have room to hang the mask off the edge. Robert, can you come help me here? And I think I made my string way too long. Down, 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 down. Just a little bit too long. Do you hear mommy off the camera being awesome? You should tell her to come join us that we need Join to us! Join us! Join us! So Maylin is over here hiding join off camera, us. but she's giving me amazing advice, so I think she should come join us. Her advice, instead of me cutting the string and messing up again, was to estimate by pulling the string through the cap so I get the proper length, then cutting it and tying my knot. I don't know what I would do without you. You're amazing. Thank you. Awesome. So I am going to take her up on her advice. That's right. And I'm going to cut the string to length, then make a knot here. Now, what happened? She's joining us. Awesome. So I have my cap ready now. I made the string a shorter length. And now what we could do is we could do a series of experiments, Robert. Are you ready to do our first experiment? Are you ready? Yep. Awesome. So we could hang this off the side with no mass in it except for the mass of the container. I know it's hard for you to see hanging off, but just imagine the string hanging off the table and the bottle is just sliding down because of gravity. Nothing special happening there. What's special is watching this end and this car move. Hey, Robert, can you hold this car? And that's a pretty awesome car too. I like that a lot. We're gonna put that right there in our collection, okay? Hey, my guy's in there. Your guy's in there? Okay, and Robert, when he lets go, we're going to see how quickly the car is moving with that mass attached to it. And we're going to do like qualitative experiment. A qualitative experiment is where you don't have to take any measurements or anything. You're just using observation to see what is happening there. Okay? Okay, when you're ready. Three, two, one. All right. So did everybody catch that motion? Do it one more time, Robert. Ready? One, oh, you hold it. Three, two, one. All right. 
So you, you saw it move. Did it move kind of fast or kind of slow or what? Kind of slow. Kind of slow. Okay. So let's see what happens if we put more mass, more stuff in here. So we're making the F, the force, bigger. What do you think is going to happen if we put a bigger force on that car? It's going to go slower. Do you think if you put push harder, it's going to make it go slower? Or you think if you push harder, it's going to make it go faster? Um, harder? Maybe faster? Okay, let's do an experiment. Let's get some Legos. Let's put some Legos in here. The thin ones work really good in here. Like those that you have in there. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought they were singles. No. They're doubles. The white ones are singles. Awesome, these are small. So Robert, let's let's do just a quick little process. How many do you want to put in there? Three. Okay, put three in there. Two. Okay, let's screw the cap back on. Let's set up our little demo again. All right, Robert. So now you have a bigger. Robert, careful. You gotta hold it. You have a bigger F in there now, right? So do you, do you think that's going to make your car faster or smaller? Or slower, I'm sorry. Faster. Okay, ready? When you're ready, you count down. How did that move? A little bit faster. It moved a little bit faster, right? Let's do it one more time. I think it got stuck on the edge there for a second. Okay, ready? It moved faster, right? Okay, so let's put more, more stuff in here. Make it even heavier here, right? So we're adding a bigger force. Put three more, right? That way we can maintain a consistency. Okay. So we put six in here total now, right? Okay. How do you think it's going to move now? Faster. Even faster? Okay, let's see if you're right. Right. Okay, hold it. Why don't you put your character in there? Put him. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Not yet. Not yet. Oh. Why should we not put him in there right now? It would make it um, a little bit slower. Because we're changing another variable, right? You're changing the mass in here. So we don't want to do that yet. We'll do that in a moment. Oh, okay. so this is actually the engine it has. That's the engine over there, making it faster. Oh, you didn't do a countdown. Countdown. Three, two, one. How did it move now? Faster. Even faster. All right, let's do one more. If we put three more in here, what do you think it's going to do? They're going to make it go faster, then they make it go slower. Um, faster. Even faster. So you, you're on to something, right? If you make the force bigger, the car is going to accelerate more. It's going to move faster. It's going to speed up. Okay. Again, three, two, one, Robert, ready? Whoa. Okay. Three, two, one. Wow, you're starting to see that car speed up really quickly, right? Awesome. So, bigger F gives more acceleration, right? You show that later. You're giving all the results already, me. No, it's not. <laughs> it's just that. Oh, okay. I thought it was the uh, Robert here. Let's look at it. Put it, put it here on camera. So you can I see. put it on camera. So explain what you have here, Maylin. All right, so these are just um, observations that were made, and we added more force, so you see the F is becoming larger. Um, the mass stayed the same. We did not change anything on the car itself. Um, and then we saw as a result, the acceleration is increasing. So that's why I drew the A's a little bit larger as well. Nice. Robert, do you understand that? And tell, tell us in your own words what that means. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds like this my students. No, this is yes. Okay, but what does, what does it mean? When the F gets larger, what changes when the F gets larger? The mass or the A? The A. Uh huh. So as the force gets bigger, the car is going to speed up more. 
And that's what you told us, right? Simple enough. Awesome. So now we're going to do an experiment where we don't change the force. We're going to change, so we can leave it as it is. We're not going to change the force, but we're going to change the, the mass of the car. Ah! So you could build more, put, put the guy on there, and you could build more Legos and put more Legos onto your car and see how that changes. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Leah Haynes. She said she loves doing projects with this family. <laughs> Awesome. So, does that guy stick on there? Mm -mm. Uh oh. I think it's time for Robert to go on there. Perfect. Yay! Let's use this guy too. That's Zach Brown. That's Zach Brown? Okay, cool. He doesn't have a helmet. What is he trying? Put a helmet on him then. He's got his hat, his cowboy hat. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to put these hey, little things here that mommy's making. So, Robert, do we have more mass on there now? All right, watch how it moves now. You can do the countdown. Three, two, two. Well, you hold it, and you let go. Let's put the card to the side. Back in our collection. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go! Okay, you saw how it moved now, right? All right, let's put more Legos on here. Let's see how we put more Legos. You May I already made? Okay, put more Legos. Three, two, one, Robert. Okay, Robert, we're running out of time. Come on, buddy. Okay. We gotta finish up, okay? Ready? Three, two, one! Oh, did you notice something? It went slower. Slower. Can we make it even slower? Put more Legos on there. Oh, so just that many. Okay, three, two, one again, and then we'll do one more. Three, two, one. Should it move slower or faster? A little bit faster. A little faster or slower? Okay, let's put more. Oop, it broke the phone. <laughs> now it moved really fast. Did you see how quick it was moving? <laughs> All right. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, look how slow. It didn't even move anymore. So we there we go. It's but slow. You see how slow it's moving now? Mm -hmm. So what happens when the car gets more massive? It moves slow. Slower. Let's see how much that tells me. That's so slow, huh? Awesome. It's so, a turtle. All right, Maylin's going to explain what we just discovered here with Robert, and then we can go on to third one. Okay, okay, so we kept the force constant, um, but we changed the mass. The mass was increasing, and then we see an inverse relationship with the acceleration. Um, so we see it de decelerate. Well, not decelerating. It's not slowing down, but it's not accelerating it's, as fast. Right. It's speeding up at a slower rate. Right. Increase. So. And that, so for our math connection... That's what we have here, right? So you see that the mass is an inverse relationship to the acceleration, and the force is a direct relationship to the acceleration. So that's what Newton's second law tells us, is that the mass of an object, the force, and its acceleration have that sort of relationship. And we know that from the real world, rather, right? Mm -hmm. When something's heavier, it's harder to make it accelerate, so you've got to push harder on it, right? Awesome. So we have one more law to go through, and that is third law. And we could use our two cars that we have here, Robert's car that he's making here. And I'm going to take That's all my the monster truck. Awesome. Your monster truck. And I'm going to take all the extra mass off of here. This is the door. And I'm going to cut yeah. the string off. And what we're going to use are magnets. I'm going to use magnets to show this. Awesome. I can get this string off here. Doing little things on camera is much harder than it is doing them off camera. I don't know what it is. 
They just always seem to work better. Look, my guy's getting protected. Okay, I'm gonna use these scissors better. I think. You have scissors on this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're in the middle. Okay. There you go. All right, so we're gonna get some magnets on the front of this car. Where's Where's Zach Brown? I think he fell on the floor. Oh, okay. He was testing uh, Newton's idea of gravity. And then I need a little bit of tape. Tape, tape, tape. The duct tape. Is there a duct tape there? Cool. Can you make little loops for me, man? Like this stuff. Me to hold the magnet to the front of the car. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our two Lego cars that we have here. We're going to attach magnets to the front of them. And I want to make sure that when I attach the magnets, it's not going to be opposite polarity, but I want them to be the same polarity because I want them to push off of each other. Sorry, buddy. Watch your eyes. I want them to be able to push off. It almost did. I want it to push off of it and not attract each other. If you make the mistake and put them backwards, like I probably will, then you just have to take the tape off and the magnet and reverse the polarity. A couple of them is just fine. Okay. And now I'm going to check the polarity here. Oop. I hope this works good with the tape. Okay, put that one on the other car. Again, I'm checking polarity. Right backwards. All right. So now let's see if they don't like each other. They do not like each other, but they're at different heights. So this might take a little bit of playing around. You want to make sure the magnets are roughly in the same plane as each other. Okay. And now you've created Robert, be careful. Hold on. Ooh, they like each other. I don't want them to like each other, so don't push them yet. Nah. Wait. I don't like you. Alright, so now I gotta adjust here again to make sure they're in the same height plane. Okay. And now what we want to do, don't push yet, Robert, is we want to put them really close near each other. And what you're doing is you're using the force between the magnets to push, and then you'll see, it's not working here. You want them to push against each other and back off. So you can kind of see it there. Do you see it? Oops. Try it again. Is that showing up clear on camera? Maybe? Yeah, you can see it better. Okay, so you want to, you put the opposite, I'm sorry, the same polarity magnets, so that way they push off of each other. And now you can see that you have one force in there that is going two different directions. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the car, Robert's, uh, what did you call this, Robert? What was this car called? Your monster truck. Your monster truck is pushing off of your race car here, right? And which one has more mass? Which one has more mass? Your monster truck, right? So if you look, when they push, your monster truck doesn't really move back, right? But the, your, light your race car, the light car does, right? It's a go-kart. It's a go-kart. So you see Newton's third law there. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. As this car pushes that car that direction, this car and its force is going to push the car that direction. Are we going to battle? We could try to battle. Okay, ready? Let's see what happens if we roll them towards each other. Ready? Keep them in a straight line now. Three, two, one. Oh, you didn't keep it straight. Three, two, one. Oh, now they attached. Get awesome. off me. Wait, it, wait, what if we battle without this? <laughs> that is Murphy's Law there. Awesome. So everybody, thank you for joining us today. I know we, we rushed through the, the third law there. 
But the idea that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction is that for every push between two objects, you have an equal and opposite push in the other direction. So uh, one, one thing that you could think of is when you're walking around your house today is what direction you're, you walk when you're pushing on the floor, right? If you're walking this direction, you have to actually push the floor that way. And the floor is what's propelling you forward. Again, your action is always opposite to the direction you're moving when you're walking. To get out of uh, trouble? To get out of trouble, tell me. More. Oh, yeah. So I, my physics teacher taught me when I was in high school that if you were ever in a fist fight, the first question they always ask you is who threw the first punch? And so the idea here is that you would answer you, you both, or well, how do you say it? That he threw the first punch first, because as soon as your fist connected his face, he hits you back. So it's impossible for some person to throw the first punch at the same time, because you hit each other at exactly the same time. Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It won't hold up in a court of law, but it's fun to think about. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for joining us today for our hour of creative play and learning. We, we at Tuba Circus Foundation, will be back here on Tuesday, tomorrow, again at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you to Vans for helping support our initiatives and doing these live streams. Everybody take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Wow.